As the sun set on the small town of Millfield, a strange silence settled over the streets. The usual sounds of cars passing by and dogs barking were absent, leaving only an eerie quietness in their place. Emma, a college student, was walking home from the library, her backpack heavy with textbooks. She couldn't shake the feeling that someone or something was watching her from the shadows. She quickened her pace, but the silence only seemed to grow louder. As she turned a corner, she saw a figure standing in the distance, silhouetted against the dying light of the sun. It was a man, tall and thin, with a blank expression on his face. Emma couldn't see any features, only the outline of his body. She felt a chill run down her spine as the figure began to move towards her, his footsteps slow and deliberate. She tried to run, but her feet felt heavy, as if they were stuck to the ground. As the figure drew closer, Emma could hear a faint whispering sound coming from him, as if he were speaking in a language she couldn't understand. The sound sent shivers down her spine. Just as the figure was about to reach her, a car drove by, breaking the silence and causing the figure to disappear. Emma was left alone, her heart pounding in her chest. She never spoke of the incident to anyone, but from that day on, she avoided walking home alone at night and always made sure to stay in well-lit areas. The eerie silence of that evening stayed with her for a long time, a reminder of the inexplicable horrors that can lurk in the quietest moments. Emma was an art lover who visited museums and galleries every chance she got. Her love for art had taken her to the grand opening of a new exhibit at the Museum of Modern Art. The exhibit was rumored to showcase some of the most forbidden and controversial pieces of art in history. Emma was excited to see what the exhibit had to offer. She walked through the gallery, admiring the beauty and creativity of the artwork. However, as she reached the end of the exhibit, she noticed a mysterious curtain that covered a painting. Curiosity getting the better of her, Emma peeked behind the curtain to see what the painting was. To her horror, she found herself staring at a gruesome portrait of a disfigured face with piercing red eyes. As she stared at the painting, Emma felt a chilling presence behind her. She turned around to find the curator of the museum standing behind her, a menacing look in his eyes. Who told you to look behind that curtain? He asked in a stern voice. I'm sorry, I was just curious, Emma stuttered. You shouldn't have done that, the curator replied, his voice cold as ice. That painting is cursed, and those who look at it are doomed to face their worst fears. Emma felt a chill run down her spine as the curator's words sank in. She realized that she had made a terrible mistake by looking at the painting. As she rushed out of the museum, Emma could feel a presence following her. She turned around, but there was no one there. She quickened her pace, but the presence seemed to grow stronger with each step. Emma soon realized that the curse of the forbidden exhibit had taken hold of her, and she would never be able to escape the horrors that awaited her. It was an ordinary day when Jane stumbled upon a quaint little art gallery tucked away in a side street. As she stepped inside, she was struck by the eerie atmosphere that seemed to permeate the air. The paintings that adorned the walls were unsettling, to say the least, but one, in particular, caught her eye. It was a portrait of a woman with jet black hair and piercing green eyes, but there was something off about it. As Jane stared at the painting, the woman seemed to move, her eyes following her every movement. Suddenly, the lights went out and Jane found herself plunged into darkness. She could hear whispers and the sound of footsteps getting closer and closer. As the lights flickered back on, she saw that the painting had changed. The woman in the portrait now had a sinister grin on her face, and the other paintings in the gallery had also transformed into scenes of terror and nightmares. Jane realized too late that she had stumbled upon the Gallery of Nightmares, a cursed gallery where the paintings were possessed by vengeful spirits. She had to find a way to escape before she became trapped in the gallery forever, surrounded by the horrors of her own nightmares. Once a famous artist, Edgar had become notorious for his macabre works of art that seemed to be alive. His latest masterpiece, a painting of a beautiful woman, had become the talk of the town. However, as the weeks passed, strange things began to happen in the gallery where the painting was displayed. Visitors reported feeling watched by the woman in the painting and claimed that her expression had changed. 
Edgar dismissed these reports, claiming they were simply overactive imaginations. But one night, a security guard was found dead in the gallery, his body twisted in an unnatural position. Edgar was shocked to see that the painting of the woman was no longer on the wall but lying on the floor, the canvas seemingly torn from the inside. As Edgar tried to unravel the mystery of the painting, he realized that his creation had become more than just a work of art, but a living and breathing entity, determined to break free from the canvas and wreak havoc on the world. Desperate to stop the living canvas, Edgar sought the help of a renowned exorcist, who warned him that the only way to destroy the painting was to destroy the canvas itself. But as Edgar prepared to destroy his masterpiece, he wondered if he would be able to resist the allure of creating another living work of art. The small town of Millfield had always been a peaceful place. But one night, a strange fog descended on the town, leaving everything shrouded in mist. At first, the locals thought nothing of it, assuming it was just a natural occurrence. But as the days went on, the fog refused to lift. People began to report strange sightings in the mist, shadows moving just out of sight, and eerie whispers in their ears. Some residents claimed they saw glowing eyes peering out from the fog, while others claimed to hear ghostly moans and screams. The town was in a state of panic, and nobody knew what to do. That was until a group of teenagers decided to investigate. They ventured into the fog, determined to uncover its source. As they walked deeper into the mist, they felt as though they were being watched. Suddenly, they stumbled upon an old graveyard hidden in the fog. They soon discovered that the fog was emanating from the graveyard, and it was being caused by a vengeful spirit who had been buried there years ago. The spirit had been awakened by recent construction work in the area, and it was seeking revenge on the townspeople who had disturbed its resting place. The teenagers knew they had to stop the spirit, and they worked together to perform a ritual to put it to rest. As they completed the ritual, the fog slowly began to dissipate, and the town was once again bathed in sunlight. The locals rejoiced, grateful for the brave teenagers who had saved their town from the clutches of the mysterious fog. In the old Victorian mansion on the hill, strange things had been happening. Every night, the sounds of phantom footsteps echoed through the halls. The new owners, John and Emily, couldn't shake the feeling of being watched as they settled into their new home. One night, as they were sitting in the parlor, they heard the footsteps again. This time, they were accompanied by a faint whispering voice. Emily shivered as she realized that the voice was calling out her name. John, ever the skeptic, went to investigate. As he approached the staircase, he saw a shadowy figure disappear around the corner. He followed the figure up the stairs and down a long hallway, until he reached the end of the corridor. There, he found a room that he had never seen before. The door creaked as he pushed it open, revealing a dusty and forgotten space. But in the center of the room, there was a small, old-fashioned phonograph, playing a haunting melody. As John moved closer, he saw that the phonograph was wound up, and there was nobody in the room. Suddenly, the music stopped, and John heard the phantom footsteps once again. This time, they seemed to be getting closer. He turned to run, but found that the door had closed behind him, trapping him in the room. The footsteps grew louder, and he could feel a cold breath on the back of his neck. In that moment, John realized the truth behind the phantom footsteps. They were the ghostly echoes of a long-forgotten past, and the sinister voice was that of the mansion's previous owner, still seeking revenge from beyond the grave. Detective John Smith had seen some strange cases in his time, but this one was a doozy. He arrived at the scene of a strange occurrence at the old mansion on the outskirts of town. The mansion belonged to a wealthy family that had been living there for generations, and it had been passed down through the family for centuries. But today, something was off. The family's young daughter had received a gift in the mail, a dollhouse made of dark wood with intricate detailing. The parents thought nothing of it and left the girl to play with it in her room. But when they came to check on her, they found the room covered in a thick layer of dust, cobwebs, and strange symbols etched into the walls. The girl was nowhere to be found, and the dollhouse had taken on a life of its own. As Detective Smith examined the scene, 
he noticed strange energy emanating from the dollhouse. He picked it up and took it back to the station for further examination. He called in a specialist, a woman who had been studying the supernatural for years, and together they examined the dollhouse and the strange markings on the walls. They discovered that the dollhouse was indeed possessed by a demon, and it had taken the young girl as its vessel. They had to act quickly to exorcise the demon and save the girl's soul. The investigation led them down a dark path filled with secrets, lies, and betrayal. As they delved deeper into the history of the mansion and its occupants, they discovered that the family had made a deal with the devil generations ago, and now, the demon had come to collect. With the help of a specialist and some quick thinking, Detective Smith was able to exorcise the demon from the dollhouse and save the young girl. But the case had taken its toll on him, and he realized that some things are better left unexplored. From that day on, the dollhouse was sealed away, and the mansion was left abandoned. The family had left town, and the incident was never spoken of again. But Detective Smith couldn't shake the feeling that there was still evil lurking in the shadows, waiting to strike again. Detective Harry Sanders had seen his fair share of strange cases, but none quite like this one. When he received a call from the manager of the historic Grand Hotel, he knew it would be a doozy. It started with strange reports of guests hearing eerie voices and feeling cold spots throughout the hotel. The staff attributed it to the hotel's history of being a former asylum and its rumored connection to a cult. But when a wealthy businessman staying in the penthouse suite was found dead, everything changed. The cause of death was unclear, but there was one thing that was certain, the room had been cursed. It was said that anyone who stayed in the penthouse suite would be haunted by the ghosts of the asylum's former patients. Harry knew he had to solve this case before anyone else was hurt. As he delved deeper into the mystery, he uncovered a web of lies, deceit, and dark secrets. He discovered that the hotel manager had been involved in a money laundering scheme with the businessman, and had used the cursed room as a way to get rid of him. But the curse was more than just a legend. As Harry and his team conducted a paranormal investigation, they uncovered evidence of a malevolent entity that had been summoned by the cult. The entity had possessed the businessman and caused his death. With the help of a local psychic, Harry was able to perform an exorcism to banish the entity back to where it came from. The curse was lifted, and the hotel was able to return to its former glory. But Harry couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to this case than what met the eye. He had a suspicion that the cult was still active and that they were planning something much more sinister. And so, he kept his eyes and ears open, ready for the next case that would come his way.